So today I'm working on a storage bag. I have already made one of these and I sort of want to copy it. Um, this is the very first finished sewn thing that I've made so far. And I just kind of wanted to document it, share um, the things I like about it and the things that like went kind of terrible, but I love it anyway. Um, yeah, so it's it's a mess, but I like the, the main idea of it. So I wanted a bag that I could take over to my boyfriend's RV at night um, because we always hang out at his place and watch TV and I wanted to crochet over there and carry things. I was just carrying my backpack over <laughs> like, like a kindergartner <laughs> with a sleepover. It was, um, I don't know, I just wanted something nicer. So I knew I wanted it to be sturdy um, because like everything I'm going to set this on is probably going to be a little bit dirty. Um, I wanted it to be strong. And at first I wanted to make like just a sewn bag, like, you know, a very first starter project. Let's go easy, quickly balloon from that because I wanted to. <laughs> um, so I thrifted some of, this is like a khaki uh, canvas jean material. And here's an original seam. Um, but I didn't have enough for like a whole bag. And so I was like, well, I want to learn crochet. So I'm going to practice crochet. Uh, so I sort of combined, I looked at plans for sewn bags and crocheted bags and just kind of combined it. Uh, originally I wanted to do like thirds, so it was going to be a third cloth on the bottom and then a third this dark green crochet and then a third of this and um, <laughs> the proportions are off. Like, yeah, I don't know why. I think the crochet sort of expanded compared to how it, I was measuring it as I went. So just as a side note, this video documenting vlog journal thing. I, I don't know what it's going to be yet and I'm it's basically the equivalent of this bag. It's my first step. It's going to be messy. I'm trying to not be perfectionist about it but I promise it'll get better. Um, all right so back to the bag and some things that I've learned about sewing and crochet so far that I kind of wanted to remember. Um, I So the good things first like I really liked how I just sort of winged it and was like, hey, I like this color. Um, I found this color of yarn at Michael's and it's such a cool texture. I think it was called Peaches and Cream. Um, pretty cheap, I think. I don't know yarn prices yet, I guess. Um, I was just drawn to it and I picked it up. And then I picked up this yarn later at Walmart and it just happened to match um, I don't think it's perfect, but it's close enough to be cool in my eyes. And then the liner was a thrifted tablecloth that my friend found uh, when we were off thrifting and trying to find cool materials and um, fabrics and just textures. Man, I love a good texture. So I think that was a good it was a positive, right? Like, I just like the overall feel of it. It's got some masculine, some like tomboy energy that I'm drawn to. And that, but the crochet is a nice, cool texture and it's sort of feminine and um, like vines, like nature y. I like the green and the other green, <laughs> the green and the brown, brown green. So some of the things that didn't turn out so well, I'm learning that duplicating things is really hard or I'm not good at it yet. Um, so the crochet is one rectangle, um, but as I made my first piece, I must not have been doing the edges right and it expanded. So you can see it sort of like, <laughs> it's not very straight. It got wider at the top as I went um, I'm learning how to do those edges better. But the second one didn't. <laughs> the second one was more straight. And so I had gaps. And so I had to fill it in with like, uh, little single crochet 
fits and it's just kind of patchy and you can see on the sides like it's just not it's not perfect it's more organic I guess that's okay I just kind of went with it I would have had to tear it all apart and redo it and I really wanted to but I also really just wanted to have this bag to use and that was a good that was a good lesson having something I wanted to use got me to finish it useful the crochet stitch itself is just a double stitch with a chain and that's it's just that over and over again and it makes this nice little um basket weave sort of looking thing it's a really simple like beginner crochet stitch i didn't want to go too fancy yet but um i like how that turned out so that was a positive i'm sorry if you hear snoring throughout this we're we're interrupting Belle's typical sleep session, one of many, and um, I didn't have the heart to make her move. <laughs> so one of the other lessons I've learned is straight lines on a sewing machine are actually kind of hard um, in joining fabrics, and I wasn't quite sure how to join the crochet to the material. So you can see I've got like I mean, that line actually doesn't look too bad right there, but you can see it and I didn't want to be able to. This side's a little better. It's nitpicky, I know, but I'd like to make it look nice. Um, and then there's the straps, which structurally have turned out pretty good, I think. It makes for, you know, for such a lightweight crochet bag, it can actually, it's fairly sturdy. Uh, that was my boyfriend's idea. He came up with that and I love it. <clears throat> but joining <laughs> the strap, which the strap is just folded over uh, more jeans material. I didn't have a lot, so they ended up thinner than I expected. Um, by the time I folded it over, this was like the leftover bits of a jean leg. Uh, and as you can tell, they're not nearly tall enough. Um, <laughs> And they're lopsided. This is very short. Uh, that was another, that's another lesson I've been learning is, boy, the measure twice, cut once thing, like just applies times four with sewing. Uh, especially my wing it sort of attitude with a lot of things doesn't work so well with measurements and I need to be a little better about that. I don't know what I would have done to lengthen these well, and part of it too was trying to get this to go be straight on the crochet as I sewed. Like I think the crochet stretched on one side more than the other and it was just kind of hard. <laughs> or I was doing it wrong or maybe I didn't have the right sewing foot. I don't know. Um, hopefully this next one will be better. And then you can tell I was trying to sew straight lines and they were just very off. They weren't very parallel. And so I just got silly with it. I, um, instead of trying to be perfectionist because it was already done, I couldn't undo it. I mean, you can see in rip, but I didn't want to. So I just got silly and I was like, let's just zigzag stitch everything and make it look silly on purpose and just go with it. And I liked that. That was, um, I don't know, it makes me giggle when I look at it. It's, just, it's silly and it's like, why? Why does it do that sometimes? It got stuck. This little, this bit. I don't know much about sewing machines yet. I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, so that is my first bag and it's um I use it a lot it is working for the purpose that I wanted it uh for and I can put knitting crochet whatever I'm working on in there uh the crochet needles and knitting needles do slide out the holes some tutorial warned me against that I was like nah it'll be fine but yeah that's actually annoying so this next bag started out as a custom sized fabric box for my RV cupboards in my bedroom. Um, all of my RV cupboards are just weird sizes and you can't really just pick up like a fabric 
or I mean a plastic bin from Walmart and expect it all to fit like it's, it's just annoying and I've been picking up all of these supplies for sewing like you know thrifted clothes and materials and all the yarn and I just wanted I want them to have nice places to live um, so I thought this would be an easy project to start up on so these fabric boxes are pretty simple you just need two rectangles of fabric an outer and a liner um, and then you cut corners or you cut squares out of the corner so it becomes this big plush shape and then you sew those corners together there's some great YouTube tutorials out there that will show this better, better than I can explain it basically you end up with <clears throat> it's a little box it has corners and a lot of people flip over the top so you can see like a patterned uh, inner lining or um, you can reverse it anyhow so this is that tablecloth material from before and this was this like really big um, it's kind of a canvas cotton dress that was three bucks or something it was pretty cool I like the color and it's soft but as far as the box goes, it's not sturdy enough. I knew it would be floppy, but it needed like, maybe I'll try to do this with cardboard inside or I don't know yet. Anyway, it'll make a better bag bottom than a box. Um, so I thought I'd crochet a top for it and do kind of the same thing as that other bag. Good morning. Oh, stretchy. Oh, it's a sticky dog. Good girl. Oh, it's a pretty dog. So for the crocheted top to this bag, I'm using a yarn that I randomly picked up at Michael's um, because I just like the colors. It's all of my favorites. It's uh, just purple and green and blue and there's some yellow and it's sparkly. It has this tinsel going through it. It's fun. I like it. Um, yeah, so this time around, instead of trying to match two pieces of crochet, because I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet, um, I just made one long scarfy dude, <laughs> uh, and then sewed it together. So these are the colors. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, and I feel like it just goes with the bag. And I did the same pattern, so it's just this, it's like a double crochet stitch and then a chain and it makes this sort of basket weave. Oh, you can see it with the light. Yeah, but it's tighter because this yarn is thinner. So come to find out when you buy yarn on the yarn packaging, it tells you what size needle to use. Um, I didn't know that ahead of time. I'm sure if you like, if you already know how to knit or crochet, you know these things, but it's exciting to me uh, because it feels like I can just wing it with a project more. I can just pick up a yarn that calls to me and then know um, what sort of, what size needle or hook to use with it to make whatever I feel like. It doesn't have to be the set in stone thing. Um, I don't know, it just feels freeing to know that. So I have my round of crochet um, yeah, what was just a long piece. I did what's called a slip stitch and put this together. So now it just sort of has the seam. Simple enough. Um, the, what I like about this is I can look back at, uh, the different stitches and the rows and remember, um, the shows we were watching and yeah, we were watching Station Eleven mostly when I was making this and I just, I like that it brings back the memories. Um, it's just really cool how drawing or something sort of mundane like this can capture um, a moment or moments as you go. I like that. I like that part of this. It's really, um, it's soothing for sure while I'm just going along working on it. But because I get so wrapped up in just going along and making all of these stitches and rows 
I am learning that I lose sight of the um, the project view of things. So when I started this out, I measured that the that the yarn stitches, the crochet stitches, matched the circumference of this bag. Um, now it doesn't. I didn't like keep measuring against the bag and now it's so much shorter. I don't know why it won't even like it's not even going to stretch to be big enough. So <laughs> next step on this bag is I'm going to take the seam apart and fill it in somehow either with the same yarn or I might go funky and just give it like a weird stripe and show off that I made it too short. That might be fun. And then after that, we'll stitch the crochet to the bag. I need to make up straps for the bag. Um, I have more of this material, a good amount, and, and this material. I might make straps out of both or either. Um, and then at that point, this will be stitched together. I will stitch the straps on and that should be it. It should be ready to use. So. Let's get started. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I have my bag, I have the crocheted top that is this much too short. Um, I think I just want to cut this up a bit and string it together with this viney yarn um, because it'll kind of go with the, uh, the lining motif and maybe some white too. Like just kind of make it funky it's gonna be a fabric scrap bag anyway um i don't know it's just a reason to play so <laughs> let's see how this goes it might just be a mess all right that was pretty satisfying i tried not to cut the major um knots but i don't know I'm, I'm kind of digging this. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but we'll, uh, we'll find out. This is going to be kind of cool. Um, these edges are really, they really want to fall apart. So I think I'm going to sew them with a zigzag stitch and see how that goes. This might be terrible, <laughs> but it might rock. Oh yeah. So real quick, this is my new toy. I never thought I'd own a sewing machine before, but I love it. Um, it's a Singer Heavy Duty. It is a really common machine. It's really well reviewed, uh, but mostly my friend Sarah, who also lives in an RV, um, she recommended it. And she sews like a ton of awesome cosplays and these Loki uh, Kitty plush dolls that have been like a huge hit. And yeah, this is what she recommended. So I should be able to do jeans and curtains and um, hopefully RV seat cushion covers, <laughs> things like that. Anyway, so the idea here um, is I've got these ripped edges or cut edges that kind of want to unravel. I think if I go over them with, um, with a zigzag stitch, it should secure the ends. So they won't unravel on me and then I can kind of crochet in between them and weave it all together. It'll be like a mosaic. I'm excited. So yeah, I think this is going to work. It seems fairly solid. Um, I like the ragged edge. That's kind of cool. I think that'll look good against the white. And the vine can kind of crawl in between. Um, yeah, it gives me a, a row to work off of. This is gonna, I think this is gonna work. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, I got a little bit sidetracked cleaning out my attic space um, because we pulled my solar panels out of there that have been stored up there for a little bit and we're going to put on a bunch of solar on my RV, uh, hopefully today. Anyway, back to the crafting. 
so I've got all of my little sewn edge mosaic pieces and my green yarn, my white yarn in the bag and nice little pretty breakfast. See how far I can get today. Okay, so it's been a couple of days now. Again, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna time projects and these videos and things because life. <laughs> um, yeah, I got a little farther on, here's my little bag topper patches. I'm really happy about this. It's not super flat, but I think it will be eventually, but it's just sort of organic. And um, so I've mostly been putting white next to the color uh, sparkly yarn um, because it ties to it better than the, than the real thick yarn. But right there it did. I don't know, I don't really have like a plan. I'm just sort of making a rectangle shape. You guys can't really see it there. Making a rectangle shape, filling in gaps using super simple uh, crochet knots because I only know about four right now and I just want to play with what I know. Yeah, it's been real fun. Um, this part took a lot longer than I expected, mostly because I was watching, um, there's a YouTuber called Zoe Hong who is a fashion designer and she teaches at fashion schools and she just has a ton of videos on learning fashion design and learning all of the tools and learning how to sketch and how to create a fashion business and just on and on. Um, so I'm going through her design process videos, which are, I'm learning so much. I just, I just love design process. I, I love it with web design, learning how how to design so people can read um, or take in content or just all of the thought process behind making something work for its purpose but also playing with colors and making it fun or quirky or whatever feeling you want. Um, I just love all of that and this is her videos are just hitting that that magic place for me where it's just so fun. So yeah, while I was watching her videos, I was taking notes and looking up what she was talking about. Um, so this took a little bit longer, but now I have those memories kind of sewn in and just learning. Sketching was like this section um, in mood boards, I think was around in here. It's, it's funny how that works. I just love it. So for the past couple of days, I've mostly been working but also I came to the realization that with all of this sewing and crafting and um, fashion design or wherever this is going to go, I'm very much an advanced beginner. I have that mentality when you start something that's like, oh, there's an amazing dress. I could probably make that. <laughs> Just the audacity of, I, I could probably do that. Oh, here's a cool thing. Um, I could figure that out. I can do that and not realizing, of course, just all what it goes into that and the whole um, mountain of things to learn and not to mention how much time it would actually make to take to do all of those things. Um, you don't know that when you're learning something and it just feels like you can do anything and I'm in that right now, but I've also realized it, so that's a step ahead. <laughs> uh, but I love that feeling. Um, I know it won't last. I know I'll get into the boggy bits and it'll slow down and I won't feel nearly as confident, but right now I do and I'm digging it. So to sidetrack for a second, I love YouTube videos about romanticizing your life. Just, they take a mundane day and um, celebrate a beautiful little coffee or Here's a nice little breakfast I had. Here's the walk I had with my dog. Just celebrating the quiet times or 
just the, the little things in life, right? I love those. It's calming and it affects my mood later because it lets me calm down and enjoy my coffee and enjoy my meals more and my walks with my dog. Um, I kind of want to do that sort of thing with these videos. I'm not entirely sure what route that's going to take, but combine that with this advanced be beginner mentality. Um, I love learning new things so much. Right now, this is, this is just a channel, it's not even a channel, this is a series of videos about romanticizing learning things, dang it, because it's fun <laughs> and I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I am clearly too beginner to be teaching anyone anything except the maybe just the infectious bit when you're new at something and just plain, just being silly with it. first prickly pear blooms that I've seen. It's it's really spring. And there's a deer print. <laughs> 